if you really believe $600 is going to change your life, you're an idiot. If you believe $600 is going to change your life, you're stupid. You should be ashamed. I mean, I've been broke, and I never even then thought $600 would change my life. None of you should get it. If $600 or $1,400 completely changes your life, you're you're screwed. You already had major structural crap in your life. Mental illness, the career problem, a work ethic problem, you've got character issues. How many households in America can't handle a $400 emergency nobody can right if, oh and by the way you ought to do the dave ramsey baby steps right? right and save some money i know this video is going to be triggering for some people because dave ramsey has a lot of passionate fans because he helped you get out of debt and you followed his program financial peace university and all that and you really like him but i would just like you to to pause that for a second and come with me through this video as i highlight a bunch of different news articles that have come out recently about how he treats his employees and how he runs his company. I think a lot of people are afraid to say this to him because other people have, and he has basically doxxed them. He he, uh, he pulled out a gun in a meeting to talk about how gossip is bad. He fired 12 different people for having sex outside of marriage. How does he know that? Why does he care what you're doing with your genitals? He didn't fire his co-host, Chris Hogan, some guy who teaches you how to invest your money. And he cheated on his wife multiple times. He still works there to this day. He also interviews your spouse when you go to get a job to see if your spouse has debt or um, if your spouse had kids out of wedlock. It's just a bunch of different things like that. And before you say, Dave is a Christian man and a godly man, and but his, his organization, his company is registered as a secular company. It is not a faith-based organization. And while companies can have different codes of conduct and stuff like that, I think that Dave takes it a step too far. And I think that Dave gets way too much credit for being this great godly Christian man when I have grown up Christian and I recognize wolves when I see them. I didn't really know what to title this video. I thought about a bunch of different ones like the cult of Dave Ramsey, boomer bosses Dave Ramsey, the dictatorship of Dave Ramsey. I'm not sure which one of these titles I'll pick. So when you're watching it, it, it may have changed. I want to start this video off with a video clip from his show where he's talking about how if you needed the stimulus check from the government to survive, you're a loser. I just want to show you how out of touch this man really is. So I said on Fox News this morning uh, that I don't believe in a stimulus check because if you get $600 or $1,400 and it changes your life, you didn't have a life. You're mm. already screwed. Yeah. It's, it's like I, apparently I have, I have upset and melted many snowflakes. He's calling people that needed the stimulus check to survive. He's calling us snowflakes. <laughs> He's calling us idiots. If $600 changes your life, your life really sucks. That's not true at all. Uh, I think there's a comparison to be made here about uh, just because you have low income and you might not have a savings, that doesn't mean your life sucks. There are a lot of people who have happy, great lives that are low income. $600 would change a lot of those people's lives, but that doesn't mean their lives already suck. Or you're not allowed to talk about not getting it because apparently it is freaking life changing. And I just didn't know because I'm an elite boomer. He calls himself an elite boomer. And in this case, Dave, I would have to say that you're playing into almost every single stereotype that us young people have about boomers. You're calling us young people snowflakes because a global pandemic and an economic depression happened and a bunch of people lost their jobs and they used money from the government to hopefully, you know, stay alive, stay afloat, stay away from being homeless. What, what asinine people? I mean, some of you people have lost your dad blame minds out there. He calls us asinine. He says we've lost our, our dad blame minds. Why can't you just curse, Dave? It's okay. You do it uh, behind the scenes at work in your meetings. There's articles and quotes from you from your employees that work there. Um, I think it's silly how he does that. If you really believe $600 is going to change your life, you're an idiot. So we're all idiots. We're all idiots. If, if you're just about to be homeless, and $600 from the government would let you not be homeless. You're an idiot. <laughs> Sorry. This is, it, you can go watch this video on YouTube and look at the comments. And you'll see this video has 7,000 likes somehow. I, I have no idea. Like, I get the premise of what he's saying. Like, you should have a savings. And you should, you know, make better financial choices. But name-calling people who need money, who don't have those things, is just... We're not snowflakes. This is just bad taste, Dave.
I mean, I've been broke, and I never even then thought $600 would change my life. Well, clearly you haven't been broke, Dave. <laughs> if you're really broke, $600 would do wonders. $600 is food. $600 keeps your electricity on. $600 keeps your rent going. I mean, $600 is, is enough money for a lot of people to keep looking for that next job so that they can get something. It doesn't mean that they're idiots. Back when $600 was a lot of money. It was a million dollars, huh? I mean, would $600 help? Yeah, if you hand it to me, I'll take it. Right. But I'm not going to get it, obviously, because I don't meet the income qualifications, which I shouldn't get it. None of you should get it. Okay, so that was kind of out of, out of nowhere there. He's like, uh, of course I'm rich and I don't get the stimulus check. I don't think I should because I'm rich, but none of you guys should get it either. Like, Dave, why don't you have a little bit more empathy here for people? Why don't you be a little bit more Christian, a little bit more godly? Last I checked, Jesus never said... Well, you're already screwed, so you don't deserve any more help. If $600 or $1,400 completely changes your life, you're, you're screwed. You already had major structural crap in your life. You're struggling with mental illness. That's not true. <laughs> Just because $600 or $1,400 changes someone's life does not mean they have mental illness. You're struggling with a career problem. That's not true either. Um, companies lay people off all the time for this stuff. It doesn't mean that you're struggling with your career. People above you, executives, make decisions that you're not in control of. It doesn't mean that you're struggling. You're struggling with uh, a work ethic problem. You've got character issues. None of that is true either. There are a lot of people that work hard that got let go who just didn't have a savings. Or maybe they did have a savings and their savings ran out while they were looking for a new job, but they couldn't find a new job. And this money would have kept them from being homeless. There's only one way that your life is, I mean, you could have tremendous health problems. Right. That would be it. It wouldn't be shaming anybody. It's just. So he says the only way that 600 bucks or 1400 bucks would change your life is if you had tremendous health problems. One thing I'd like to think about is I, I doubt he would be saying this if everyone took their stimulus checks and bought his Financial Peace University for $600. One of the baby steps he has in his program is that everyone should have an emergency fund of $1,000. $600 of a stimulus check is 60% of that $1,000. That's your advice, Dave. That is something. It's not supposed to be life-changing, but it can help. And, and in some cases, actually, yes, change lives. A mathematical arithmetic, uh, arithmetic recognition that $600 is not much money. Look, he's making fun of people that think $600 is, is a lot of money. Apparently, this man has just never gone to college. In this day and age, uh, he sounds like a seal. Like, he's so cocky. He's so prideful. I just don't understand how he claims to be this godly Christian man when his mannerisms and the way he acts is just not that. Just You, you ain't it, chief. How many households in America can't handle a $400 emergency? Nobody can. <laughs> he just proves himself wrong here. How many households can afford a $400 Emergency? Well, nobody can. Well, then I think $600 would save someone's butt in an emergency situation, Dave. If you believe $600 is going to change your life, you're stupid. Um, college students out there, single moms, single parents, people that are struggling, you're stupid for struggling. You should be ashamed. Get yeah, you should be ashamed that you didn't save up a bunch of money or that your savings ran out and that you didn't... <laughs> That you didn't predict the future. <laughs> Give us a what, like. What are people going to do right now and say, I don't, I don't want to be in a situation where six hundred dollars is going to turn things around for me. Well, you have to start doing the stuff that we teach. Oh, of course, of course you do. Of course you have to start following my financial peace university steps, and so that this never happens to you. By the way, link is in the description. You can go like, starts plugging his own thing. Right. If, oh, and by the way, you ought to do the Dave Ramsey baby steps. Right. right. So should you. Spend your $600 on paying your rent so you're not homeless, or should you go buy his course? I dared to suggest that the government is not going to fix your life. And so snowflakes are melting everywhere. That's not what you said, Dave. <laughs> and, and nobody, I don't really think people are expecting the government to fix their life or their spending habits. But you're just calling people stupid that could use that money to actually stay afloat or you know, buy food until their first paycheck of their job comes in. This is just so bad. It's just bad in every way. Dave is essentially saying, have you guys just tried not being poor yet? Buy my course. Find out how not to be poor. Like, I get the sentiment. People should be financially 
responsible, at least to the degree that they can, but no one can predict the future, Dave. As Jesus once famously said, fuck the poor, for their lives are already screwed. You're already screwed, so that means you don't get help. And that's, that's Dave's whole argument in this video, and it's just disgusting. It must be nice to judge people's financial situation when you have a net worth of $475 million, Dave. And you can tell how persuasive he is that he needs his little sidekick to basically echo everything that he says. You know, I think Dave is high off of his own armpit fumes at this point. This guy right here, this is Dr. John. And honestly, you can kind of see that he doesn't agree with everything that Dave is saying here. And he doesn't really know how to tell him, shut up, Dave, shut up, shut up, shut up. You're sounding really stupid. You're making us look dumb. He doesn't know how to say that and he can't stand up to him. It's because of how Dave reacts when you criticize him. There's tons of articles that I want to go over with you about how he reacts when people criticize him and tell him no, and that he's wrong. Let's talk about the most recent article first. This came out just a few days ago. Dave Ramsey's company fired 12 employees for premarital sex. And again, a lot of people would be like, well, it's a Christian company, but it's not. It's actually a secular company, and they are bound by secular laws. Dave uses Tennessee because it's an at-will employment state, and he thinks that means he can fire people for whatever he wants. First things first is he fired 12 people because people did something outside of the office in their own time, as grown adults, now why Dave wants to know what you do with your genitals in your free time outside of work is odd to me. But apparently, it's very important to his culture that you don't do that. In July 2020, a woman named Caitlin O'Connor, a former employee at Ramsey Solutions, sued the company, claiming she had been fired after requesting maternity leave in the summer of 2020. A week later, after a meeting with two members of Ramsey's operating board, O'Connor was fired for being pregnant and not married. The company's attorneys reportedly said that all employees determined to have engaged in premarital intercourse were terminated by Ramsey Solutions. But those same attorneys reportedly neglected to provide details about the company's process in determining which of its employees engaged in premarital or extramarital intercourse. That's a little weird. How do attorneys at a company know if you're having intercourse outside of marriage, outside of work? What are they doing to get that information? They won't, they won't say, but apparently they know. There's a page on Dave Ramsey's website called Employees Have to Follow the Moral Code. It begins with a question asking whether an employer is legally permitted to terminate an employee for having an extramarital affair outside of the office. Dave Ramsey says yes. He says, sure, absolutely. We have a moral code of conduct at our office. I fire people if they have extramarital affairs. I'll get to it in a minute, but this is hypocrisy because Chris Hogan, one of his top earners, one of his uh, co-hosts cheated on his wife multiple times with multiple women and he still works there to this day. And you can go book a meeting with him right now. We'll get to that in a minute. Ramsey just couldn't keep his mouth shut. Ramsey's response went on to suggest that because Tennessee is an at-will state, employers are legally allowed to fire employees for any reason. This is his quote, they freaking work for me. This is an employment at-will state which means if I decide I don't like people with green eyes, I don't have to hire you. I don't have to keep you anymore. Can we just take a second and pause? Insert X into this. Now, unsurprisingly, he got the at will thing very wrong. Yes, he can absolutely fire anyone at any time. However, if you give a reason why you fired them and it's discriminatory, you've messed up. Most people like that are smart enough not to give a reason, but Dave, he isn't. That's a discriminatory reason. If you fire people because they have green eyes or whatever other reason you deem, Dave, that's not a good reason and the government's coming for you. You will be fined for that. Imagine one day if he just walked into the office and goes, it's an at-will state, I don't like these people anymore. You can't do that, Dave. You have to have a valid reason. Let's go back to Caitlin O'Connor for a second. Caitlin O'Connor went to HR. She told the Director of Human Resources that she needed help navigating the FMLA and ADA paperwork as well as informing the leadership of her pregnancy in a workplace culture that frowned upon unwed pregnancies. O'Connor went before the company's human resources board who weighed whether she violated one of Ramsey's 14 core values of righteous living. The company doesn't provide a list of rules to its employees about living righteously. So there's that vague core value. It's interesting how the company investigates its employees' sex lives in a way that isn't biased against certain people. For example, obviously men can hide their personal life outside of work way easier than women can. If women get pregnant, you can't really hide that. Men, you know, they can do whatever they want. And if they don't get caught, they don't get caught. So it's hard not to discriminate. Dave Ramsey is quoted saying, I'm sick of dealing with all this stuff. 
I'm so tired of being falsely accused of being a jerk when all I'm trying to do is help people stay in line. It's not your job to keep people in line. It's your job to get people out of debt, Dave. Let's get a little bit more legal here. Under Title VII of the Civil Rights Act, secular employers are generally barred from discriminating on the basis of religion and other factors. Federal law also discriminates on the basis of pregnancy. I guess Dave forgot about the Pregnancy Discrimination Act of 1978, which makes what he has done very illegal. At will states don't give you... They don't give you a free pass for this. There is a difference between secular employers and faith-based employers. Secular employees, like Ramsey's company, the Lampo Group, Ramsey Solutions or whatever, they are not exempt from Title VII. Even if their owners are religious, a Christian boss, such as Dave Ramsey, cannot require employees to share his beliefs or practice Christianity the way he does. This is, again, it is not it is not a non-profit religious company. So now that we know that he's fired a bunch of people for doing things as grown adults do, consensual, whatever. Let's look at the hypocrisy that he has committed. Let's talk about Chris Hogan. Like I mentioned before, how he cheated on his wife multiple times and he still works there to this day. In November 2018, as the company was gearing up for a multi-million dollar book launch, Everyday Millionaires, his wife came to Dave Ramsey leadership with allegations that Chris had been unfaithful. The husband of a woman that Chris had an affair with begun to comment on Chris's Twitter feed, responding to his tweets with Bible verses about adultery. His wife believed that the allegations against her husband would become public, and she didn't want that. She didn't, I, I guess she didn't want her husband to get a bunch of flack for cheating on her, which I guess seems like a pretty decent woman to me. She's like trying to protect her husband that cheated on her. But anyways, according to emails obtained by RNS, the article that this information is from, Dave Ramsey's company offered to pay for marriage counseling with regular and full reports from the counselor to Dave Ramsey's leadership. That's a little odd. Why wouldn't he get fired right away? Is it because of the multi-million dollar book launch that you, you got coming up here? Chris Hogan, why does he get a free pass to stay? Why doesn't he get instantly fired? But also, why would your company have the information of what goes on at a private marriage counseling session? That seems like an overreach of boundaries. Dave also asked two of his colleagues to work with the pastor and elders at the church the, the Hogan's attended to get reports on the couple. So he says, you can stay if you go to marriage counseling, as long as I get complete reports on the counseling sessions, and we're going to make sure that your pastors and leadership at the church you guys go to are spying on you and giving me updates about how you guys are functioning. When the wife obviously disagreed about the Dave Ramsey restoration plan, she was told that she lacked hope for her marriage's future. So saying that I don't want to give you all this personal information to your company about your marriage. And then the company says, well, you lack faith. Like, what is that? So what happened was she was barred from going on Chris Hogan's book tour. That's right. They said, all right, well, if you don't want to do this, if, you're, if you don't believe in our restoration plan, well, then we're going to send Chris on a multi-million dollar book tour and you can't go. Like what? During a process that was supposed to help restore our marriage, Ramsey Solutions board members attempted to manipulate and control me through emails and phone calls. They characterized their plan as aligning with the Holy Spirit and suggested that things would not end well if I made choices to support healing in my marriage that were either not directed by Dave Ramsey's company or decisions that Dave Ramsey's company did not approve of. So imagine going to your friends and family for advice about what to do because your husband cheated on you and then getting told that doesn't align with the Holy Spirit's plan or Dave Ramsey's plan. <laughs> why, why does he overstep into people's relationships is my question as a secular company. Dave Ramsey justified their approach by saying, working for Dave Ramsey's company is a ministry and a mission. And her husband had a calling on his life to cheat on his wife with multiple women and then go sell you books on how to invest your money in a godly way. Like, really? Interesting. Chris Hogan admitted in March 2019 that he had committed adultery with multiple women during his marriage, including affairs with a former Ramsey co-worker and one of his wife's relatives that lasted more than one year. Other people have been fired for the same misconduct, yet this guy gets a restoration plan. And again, like I said, he still works there to this day. Here's a screenshot of the YouTube page and you can book Chris to come in and talk to you again about how to invest your money in a godly way to make millions. Okay, adulterer, book the man, <laughs> my note, book the man that cheated on his wife to come talk about making money with God. Seems legit, Dave. Let's move on to the next outrageous thing here. Dave Ramsey will interview your wife or your husband if you want to work for him and he will ask you a whole bunch of personal questions. In the spring of 2020, there was a lady named Heather Folk and her husband, John, was working as a developer for Dave Ramsey. In his 2011 book, Entrepreneur Leadership or whatever, 
Dave Ramsey recommends that companies vet spouses to make sure their hire is not married to crazy. When hiring someone, you are employing more than just the person. You're taking on the whole family, and when they are married to someone who's domineering, unstable, or simply full of drama, you'll end up with a team member who can't be creative, productive, or excellent. I feel like all of these characteristics are very subjective to the person looking at them. If someone disagrees with Dave, does that make them unstable in Dave's eyes? If someone disagrees with Dave, does that make them domineering in Dave's eyes? What qualifies someone as these characteristics is too subjective. She didn't want to work for Dave Ramsey. Her husband wanted to work for Dave Ramsey. She had no desire to risk being labeled a crazy spouse or to cost her husband her job. But after John got the position, Heather said the company had little impact on their personal life, except for their feeling that they had to keep her credit card a secret. Consumer debt is a Ramsey no-no. Dave Ramsey thinks credit cards are the devil. Um, it doesn't matter if you use credit cards for their rewards and you pay them off at the end of the month so you don't pay any interest. He still thinks that they're the devil because they can manipulate you and wh whatever. So a few months go by and then COVID happens and Dave is like, no, we're good. We're going to stay in the office. And then a few people in the office get COVID and they're like, all right, fine. I guess we have to work from home. And so then they work from home for like no time at all. And they came back into the office May 4th of last year. And they've still been in the office to this day while they're building a brand new structure connecting to his current structure that's going to house a bunch more employees. But anyways, Heather made a Facebook post just a private, innocuous Facebook post. Uh, Dave Ramsey wanted all 900 employees to come back to the office when a majority of them can do their work from home. And she said, I do not understand how people don't see we are setting ourselves up for a huge second wave. People make me so angry. Before long, John got a call from Dave Ramsey's company, from his supervisor, who said that a coworker had reported Heather's comment. So it, it seems like everyone that works at Dave Ramsey's company is very much inclined to report other people doing things like everyone's supposed to be a tattletale everyone's a snitch at dave ramsey's company because there's this sense of you got to be christian and godly and it's like it's not even that it's more like you just have to follow what dave says or else and dave agrees with this because he says i'm the one freaking paying you you work for me like he's a dictator anyways the reason that heather made this comment was because heather has asthma which makes uh getting covid for her something pretty significant she can't really breathe as it is and COVID has pretty big respiratory effects on you. And so she didn't want her husband to go back to a, a very crowded office with 900 people and her husband to get it and then come back and bring it home to her. That seems like, you know, that seems reasonable. But anyways, a few weeks later, John, her husband, was fired because her wife made comments on Facebook about how she thought it was a little early to be bringing people back to the office. And to confirm this, in his exit interview, Armando Lopez, the head of human resources at Dave Ramsey's company, confirmed that the cause was his wife's social media comment. Ramsey Solutions offered these people $18,000 in severance, provided that they would sign a non-disclosure agreement and agree never to make any negative comments about Dave Ramsey. The couple refused, forfeiting the severance, and the company later claimed in a cease and desist letter that Dave Ramsey policies that John signed at his hiring required him to keep details about Ramsey confidential. So looks like they're just reaching for straws at this point. Now let's move on to the OSHA complaint that someone filed. In mid-May of 2020, someone at Dave Ramsey's company filed an anonymous complaint with OSHA, alleging that the company was not doing enough to prevent the spread of the pandemic. Eventually, Dave Ramsey found out about this anonymous report, and he went on this giant rant about how the pandemic was affecting his golf game. And he basically told OSHA, we're not going to do anything in response to the complaint. Deal with it. And this is quoted straight from Dave Ramsey. So whoever you are, you moron, you did absolutely no good except piss me off, he told the staff. You are not welcome here if you are willing to do stuff like that. If you are really scared and you really think that leadership is trying to kill you, please, we love you, just leave. We really don't want you here. To me, that, that sounds like gaslighting. You're trying to flip the script. He goes on to say, I love this place and I really don't want any morons here. If you found out the person's identity, he continued, I will fire you instantly for your lack of loyalty, your lack of class, and the fact that you are a moron and you snuck through our hiring process. For someone who claims to be so godly and so Christian and so Jesus-like, these things don't seem that way. Here's another example of Dave Ramsey not giving a shit about the people who made him his wealth. This was in regards to a live event that people had purchased tickets to. Now, tickets for Dave Ramsey's live events range from $3,000 to $10,000. And this is a quote, from Dave Ramsey. We have people calling in 
they're wanting to cancel stuff for a live event in May. We have people calling in, they're wanting to cancel stuff for a live event in May. Let me tell you how much of your money I'm going to give you back if you don't come for the coronavirus in May. Zero, I am keeping your money. You are a wuss. Let's move on to the next section. The secret Facebook group that Dave Ramsey ex-employees used to stay in contact with other Dave Ramsey ex-employees. These ex-employees started talking about what goes on there and that it was like cult-like and the things that they were doing these days just got crazier and crazier and stricter and stricter. And a few people at that Facebook group had some parody Twitter accounts that they would kind of leak information on. Someone from Dave Ramsey's company snuck in to the secret Facebook group as a mole and started just ratting out everyone in there and telling Dave what people were posting about him. So, so the public criticism enraged Dave Ramsey, who according to one current employee went on a warpath to expose the people tweeting trash about him or exposing things that he did at his company. So during an all staff meeting on May 7th, that was described by several current employees, Ramsey offered thousands of dollars and bounties in exchange for the identities of the people posting the tweets. Now the people in the meeting differed on the dollar figure, but some of the employees claimed he was offering from $5,000 to $20,000 to figure out the people tweeting about him. And then on May 11th, a few days later, seemingly certain he knew who was running the Twitter accounts, Ramsey again lashed out at his critics on Twitter, naming Casey Jones, Dino Evangelista, Robert Faulkner as active members of the Facebook group. Here are some screenshots of Dave Ramsey calling people out. Um, at former cultist Robert Faulkner, you used to be a very good man, very sad you have become so unhinged. Dave, I think you're the one that's become unhinged. If you can't handle criticism of you and your company, it says a lot about you, my man. He tagged more people here. At Dave, at I am Casey Jones, at Dino. Great graphics work. How come you never did that well when you were on the team here? Cowardice is not a parody. He tags Robert again. I used to think of you as a man of courage and now hiding behind an icon. Very sad. This is very childish of you, Dave to be doing this. I used to think of you as a man of courage. He does have courage. He called you out on your bullshit. So the battle between Dave Ramsey on Twitter and the people in the secret Facebook group came to a head one day later during another staff meeting. According to three people that still work there, Dave Ramsey chose a handful of the Facebook group's members and plastered their pictures, their family's pictures, and screenshots of their private conversations on a large screen for all of his 400 plus employees to see. Amid his rant, Dave Ramsey even mentioned that he had contacted the local police department and the FBI. For what, Dave? Talking about what goes on at your company? You cannot prevent people from talking about how they're treated at their job. That's just HR law. Like. <laughs> HR lady would tell you that. Later that day, Dave Ramsey organized a meeting with the operators of several of the parody Twitter accounts, the same people he had just shamed in front of his staff. Without asking if they wanted to meet, he called their pastors. That's right, Dave Ramsey found the people who was tweeting trash about him and called their pastors, called their churches. Reserved a private room at the restaurant Bosco's in Franklin, Tennessee, and scheduled a meeting time. Then Dave Ramsey sent the group an email, later provided to the Daily Beast. The Bible clearly says that if we have a problem with our brother, we are, go we are to go to them and try to s resolve the situation. I have the courage, and I will take the time to sit with you in person and try to find resolution. My hope is that you have the courage as well. Now, I don't know if they actually went to go meet with Dave Ramsey at Bosco's, but I imagine he probably offered them some severance money and said, hey, we'll give you this money if you stop, you know, criticizing us. Now let's talk about another outrageous example of Dave, um... <laughs> Being Dave at this point, Dave Ramsey pulled out a gun in a staff meeting. And this is based on accounts of workers. And these accounts have gone to court. So the Daily Beast reported in 2011, Dave Ramsey pulled out a gun to make a point about how much he hated gossip at his company. A detail that a company official would later confirm in a court deposition. Now here's how that story went. Here's a little bit more detail from a former anonymous employee. This is the guy who once pulled a loaded pistol out of a gift bag to teach us a lesson about gossip. It was bizarre, even for Dave Ramsey. Well, that crazy anecdote has now been confirmed under oath in a court deposition by a longtime Ramsey employee. The deposition took place as part of an ongoing lawsuit over online criticism of Dave Ramsey. So last week, I guess this was in like November of 2019, he brings up the alleged incident with Dave Ramsey pulling out a gun, a loaded gun out of a gift bag. The attorney representing Ramsey's company, Brandon Bundren, objects all the way through that line of questioning. So the lawyer goes, has Dave Ramsey ever pulled a gun out of a bag to try to teach a lesson about gossip? And Dave Ramsey's lawyer goes, objection, harassing and relevance. We're getting pretty far afield from the claims made in this case. And then the witness goes, 
Yes. Shortly after that, the lawyer also asked the employee if Dave Ramsey has ever offered a cash bounty for information related to criticism of him online, you know, the five to $20,000. And then Dave Ramsey's lawyers were like, wait, you can't do that. We're objecting again and just over and over, but he didn't respond to that one. So, you know, make of what you want of that anecdote. If you haven't already gotten the message, Dave Ramsey absolutely hates gossip at his company, but what Dave Ramsey calls gossip uh, is so subjective that talking about anything in the company without going directly to your manager is gossip. You can't talk to your coworkers about what you think is going on. You can't talk to your friends about what's going on. Like he hates people talking about things, which is again, illegal. You cannot prevent employees from talking to other employees at your company about their job or what they get paid or any of that stuff. It's just, that's, it's, you can't do it, Dave. Anyways, these are Dave's thoughts on gossip. He says in a podcast, gossip is one of the most evil spirits that Satan ever let loose on this planet. Once I will warn you and then I will fire you. I have a zero tolerance plus one policy for gossip. I will teach you once and then I will fire your butt. The most telling is the kind of gossip that Dave Ramsey says is the worst. The gossip about the person who's freaking paying you. As the president and CEO of the Lampo Group, the only thing Dave Ramsey hate more than gossip is seemingly when people gossip about Dave Ramsey. Now, there are a bunch of different articles that I've gotten this information from, and I've kind of curated it to tell you about these different stories, and I will link them all below. Um, and you can go read them for yourselves here. But these news sites and these article sites reached out to Dave Ramsey's company, specifically RNS, which is the religious news site. Anyways, they reached out to Dave Ramsey's company, and they gave one of the most childish responses that I've ever seen a large company corporation gift. Let me read it to you. So the date is January 14th, 2021. Request for interview and comment. So the guy at Dave Ramsey responds to Bob. Thanks for reaching out. We want to confirm for you that you are right. We are evil, horrible people. We exist simply to bring harm to our team, take advantage of our customers and spread COVID. And you figured it all out. Wow. Who would have guessed that an unemployed guy, oh, I'm sorry, a freelance reporter would be the one to show us how horrible we are so we can change and to let the world know of our evil intent, secrets, and complete disregard for decency. You see, to me, this is kind of like gaslighting. They're just kind of insulting the person, uh, like out of nowhere here. I imagine if Dave ever saw this video, he'd probably say something similar. Oh, that Josh Flute guy, the, the kid who called me a boomer meme. Uh, he, he's just a YouTuber. or He's just an unemployed guy that makes videos and sits on his butt all day. Like I could, you see the childishness of this, but you did it. You, with all your top-notch investigative skills, have been able to weave together a series of half-truths to expose our evil ways. You are truly amazing. Because your personal virtue is so incredible, we want to help you with your hit piece and your confirmation bias. We actually have audio of Chris Hogan and him farting in church, and you should have a listen. It is truly horrendous. A couple of weeks ago, our team decided to do a worship service today at 4.30 to kick off the new year. We would love to have you come. You can bring your camera and get some great shots because there will probably be someone without a mask, who knows, there might be someone not socially distancing, and if you use those razor-sharp investigative skills of yours, you will probably catch one of them with their hands raised in worship to Jesus. If you captured this properly, it would prove that we are an evil cult. Since this is today, it won't even delay your Pulitzer Prize-winning expose of our pure evilness. Yes, you will be in a building where a thousand people hate you, but we will assign security to protect you. That is how cults do it. Please let us know in advance if you can make it so we can personally meet you at the door. And thanks again for using your superior virtue to point out our evil intent. I'm sure you can find more if you keep looking. We're also blind copying several friends to ask their help as well. They are the pastors of the top churches in the area, several business leaders and Christian leaders who have known Dave and Dave Ramsey solutions for decades. Also, we are copying our whole team. If you are on this email, we would like to ask Dave Ramsey a favor. Would you help us? Bob's phone number and email are here, and we would ask that you contact him today. So basically, Dave Ramsey's company doxes this guy to Dave Ramsey's company. This was a guy reaching out for Dave Ramsey to comment on all of these allegations, and the guy just gives the entire company Bob's phone number and asks them to contact him. And they promote, I don't, I don't want to say harassment, but look at what they're saying. They say, Bob's phone number and email are here. We will ask that you contact him today. Imagine a thousand people calling you a day. Like, and tell him all the evil, horrible stories you know about us. Also, he lives in Spring Hill. So you, if you see him out and about, be sure to congratulate him on his virtue. Like, are you serious? <laughs> if you see him out and about, be sure to go up to him. If that's not promoting unwanted conversation, I, I don't know what is. When you call, please do not be mean. Bob already has a lot of anxiety 
and we don't want to add to that. If his phone is overwhelmed or he doesn't want to hear your story, you should contact Religion News and tell them of Bob's amazing grasp on virtue and truth. You can also tell them of all the people that have been helped by his pursuit of truth throughout the years, as we all have followed his career. It is time the world knows about Bob and his blessing he has been to so many. So that was like an official response from a dude at Dave Ramsey's company. And it's one of the dumbest things I've ever read. So a lot of people, again, I'm sure I'll probably get some hate for this video, but I see Dave Ramsey as kind of like a dictator and someone who can't take criticism. And uh, whenever you do criticize him, he, he always defaults to, well, I'm just following what the Bible says. That's like his weapon and you can't criticize that, right? Well, Dave, I grew up in a really religious cult-like <laughs> upbringing. And I know when people are using it to their advantage to control people or make money. I can't say that's what you're doing, but it sure looks a little funny. Matthew 19, 24 says, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Matthew 19, 21 says, Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. You have a net worth of $457 million, Dave. I think it might be easier for a camel to get to heaven than it is for you to get there. You're saying that poor people that need $600 to, you know, pay their rent, they're idiots and they're stupid or they have work ethic problems or mental illness. That's what you're saying. That doesn't sound like something Jesus would say. Now, I'm not quite done yet. I'd like you to see some accounts of what other people have experienced working at Dave Ramsey's company. This was from Reddit. It was someone claiming that they have been interviewed there. I've interviewed there one time and was asked how many sexual partners I've had. If I had sex before marriage, if I lived with my husband before we were married, how many times I had been married, if I was married when I had my child, if I had a problem being part of a mandatory Christian services during the day, and if I found out that one of my coworkers was engaging in behavior contrary to a Christian way of thinking, would I have a problem telling HR? That sounds pretty in line with what we've read so far. Here's the Glassdoor review talking about how Dave brought a gun into a meeting. Despite what the HR plants on Glassdoor are saying, it's not a good culture. The mandatory staff meetings do little more than give Dave another platform from which to rant and management a place to pat each other on the back. For someone who's so into working hard, we have a lot of meetings that go absolutely nowhere. I've watched Dave get crazier and crazier over the years. From the time he brought a sword and a bat to a staff meeting in which he was very angry with the Tennessean, to the time he brought a real working handgun to a staff meeting to teach us a lesson about gossip and his inability to humble himself and consider another point of view and railing against other Christians who are too liberal. And seeing how much he's changed from a decent guy who seemed like he was out to help people, to a money-hungry control freak. No one can disagree with Dave. Even some of the best leaders we've had in the company have left. Of course, no one knows why, because of the rapture that happens with many coworkers. People will leave for another job or be fired, and you may not notice for weeks that they've gone. And when asked, it's like you're talking about someone who's dead. I guess I've just watched the place go from something good to something just weird, and most of these reviews on here are being put up by HR to try and keep up the best places to work facade. If you're looking for work that matters, then go work with the homeless or orphans or the widows in the evenings or the weekends and get a job with a company that treats you well and respects you as a whole person, not just what you do for them. Here's another review. Toxic high control group in sheep's clothing. For most of the time that I was at Dave Ramsey's company, I thought I had a dream job, but I've come to recognize many of the practices I perceived as healthy and normal were actually manipulative and harmful. It started with the interview process, which spanned several months. Eventually, there was a spousal interview where my spouse was asked their view of the job. We were then asked to submit a household budget, ostensibly to show we could live on the salary Ramsey offered. My understanding is that this is how it still works. I now believe this process is designed to groom employees to accept repeated boundary privacy violations and weed out anyone who sees their invasive requests as red flags. It is an EEOC violation for employers to inquire about an employee's marital status. As for the budget, it gives Ramsey Solutions insight into your other sources of income, including your spouse's. Imagine how inappropriate it would feel for any other employer to request your spouse's salary during an interview, but Ramsey sets this up as normal. Once you're in, boundary violations continue. At my first staff meeting, I was encouraged by HR to share a little bit about myself, including where I went to church, another EEOC violation. This was common practice in my experience. Ramsey's solution also has a strict no gossip policy, which they define as negatives go up, positives go all around. In practice, this means you can't voice concerns to anyone except your leader. If that concern is Ramsey Solution leadership, you're pretty much stuck and out of luck. I know people who lost jobs for voicing concerns to friends after unproductive meetings with Ramsey. Effectively, if you've gone to Ramsey Solutions and they did nothing, my perception was that there was zero people you can talk to about how you feel without risking losing your job. Meanwhile, 
for Ramsey Solution boasting their turnover is low, it is not uncommon for someone to be around one day and then gone the next day. I know several who are pressured via leveraging severance to sign NDAs when they left, prohibiting them or their spouse from ever speaking negatively about Dave Ramsey. My understanding is that this happens a lot. This is so common that it's internally referred to as the Ramsey Rapture. When my coworkers were raptured, it wasn't unusual for our team to not be told why they left until after they left. The reasons given for raptures are not always true. I've had several friends whose reasons for leaving were drastically misrepresented by Ramsey Solutions. I've also personally known Ramsey Solutions to lie in some cases, using false info to paint ex-employees in an extremely negative light and discourage employees from maintaining relationships with them. While I was there, Dave Ramsey often referred to employees as rock stars and thoroughbreds, implying that no other companies measure up to Ramsey solutions. Dave Ramsey has been awarded the best place to work numerous times. What they don't tell you is employees are strongly encouraged to put only positives on the surveys that determine these awards. If they have critiques, the survey is not the place for it. But I heard those who take issues with Dave Ramsey's personal stances, including things unrelated to financial matters, such as his views on guns or COVID, derided in staff meetings as stupid, liberals, atheists, and wusses. When Dave Ramsey was criticized in the media online, Dave Ramsey encouraged employees to trust only what Dave Ramsey was telling them and no one else. Loyalty was expected. Dave often referred to Ramsey's solution as blessed by God and his plan for money as God's plan. The takeaway as I understood it was clear. To be a smart person, good Christian, you must support Dave and his empire. If you have doubts or concerns about him or Dave Ramsey, you are not only weak, you're disloyal, lacking intelligence, and you're going against the will of God. It is my belief that Dave Ramsey exhibits many characteristics of a high control group. I would say narcissist. There was an us versus them mentality, which was reinforced in many settings, including the weekly all staff meetings and mandatory devotionals. I often heard criticism of Dave or the company painted as spiritual warfare with critics portrayed as an agent of Satan. So that does that make me an agent of Satan then? Because I feel like I'm more Christian than you and I'm not even religious. Huh. Interesting concept to think about, isn't it, Dave? For much of my time at Ramsey Solutions, I thought I was so fortunate. I was proud of the work I did. I believed in the mission and truly thought we were changing the world. But I now recognize my time at Ramsey Solutions was deeply harmful for me and my family. It normalized toxic practices and warped my understanding of healthy boundaries. It damaged my relationships by making me paranoid about confiding in friends. It wreaked havoc on my... It wreaked havoc on my spiritual... It wreaked havoc on my spirituality by tying the message from Dave Ramsey directly to the will of God. And it was not nearly as valuable professionally as I was led to believe. While much of my experience at Ramsey Solutions felt positive at the time and some of the friendships I made were genuine, I cannot in good conscience recommend anyone take a job here. Yes, some people are helped by Dave's system, but there are other financial wellness companies that aren't toxic or controlling. Go work for one of them. Now, I understand that this is a long video and I did a lot of research for this. And I'm not saying that if you got out of debt using his system, that's bad. Like, good, good work. But I, I feel like you should thank yourself, right? You're the one who made the sacrifices and did the work. He just told you you had to make sacrifices and do work. Rice and beans, you know? But that, that's really not the point of the video. The point is, I just don't understand why he's seen as such a celebrity or a god or even a godly figure. Because from what I've read... And from what I've seen on his show and how he talks to people, it, it, you ain't it, chief. It ain't it, it. ain't it. And again, coming from a religious background, I've read the Bible many, many times. I know what it says to do, and I know what it says not to do, and I know it, what it says about how to treat people. And I feel like you, you forget the part about how to treat people. Anyways, I hope that you can approach this video with an open mind. I will link all of these sources so that you can go read these things for yourself if you do not believe me and go look at all the facts. But that's it. If you enjoy this expose, this critique of Dave Ramsey, then do me a solid and click like, click thumbs up. Share the video with other people that love Dave Ramsey for no reason other than he said beans and rice work hard, Jesus. By the way, I'm not trying to be anti-Christian or anything like that. That's great. You do you, but Dave's not it. All right. That's all I got. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.